ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு என்பிடிஎல் என்ஓசி கோர்ஸ் ஆன் பாயிண்ட் செட் அப்பாலஜி பார்ட் டூ மாடியூல் செவன்டீன் ஆஸ் ப்ராமிஸ் லாஸ்ட் டைம் வி ஷெல் டூ சம் ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் பேஸ் ஸ்டடி டுடே அர்ஜிலா அஸ்கோலிஸ் தியரம்ஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் செக்ஷன் let us address our selves to determine compact subspaces of the banach space that we have introduced namely continuous functions from x to r and continuous function x to c so both of them we handle simultaneously no separate proofs or no separate techniques where x is a compact metric space okay and then uh, once you have a compact metric space continuous functions you are given supremum norm that is how it becomes a banach space as before we shall use the notation is k to denote either r or c i will make the historical comments later okay so we need a a new and important notion here of equicontinuity let xt be any metric space a family of functions f from x to k okay this is what we starting data for us we say a this a is equicontinuous if for every epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that distance between x and y is less than delta implies distance between fx and fy is less than epsilon for all f inside a so this is an epsilon delta definition so why it is called equicontinuous you can see suppose it is only one function f then this is like uniform continuity but epsilon deltas are the same for all f inside a so that is why it is called equicontinuous family so this is a new name for a new concept okay so every member of an equicontinuous family is automatically uniformly continuous if you just read this one for f this uniform continuous right also it is easy to see that a finite family of uniformly continuous functions is equicontinuous because for each f you have delta 1 say f1 delta 1 f2 delta 2 then you take the minimum of delta 1 delta 2 delta n that will work for all f so finite families of uniform continuous functions is that automatically automatically equicontinuous so this kind of notion is important only when a is an infinite family okay so here is the famous theorem of arzela ascoli let xt be a compact metric space then a closed subset a of the c remember c is continuous functions from x to k a is compact if and only if it is bounded and equicontinuous since we are working in a hausdorff space you know this x y is a banach space so if you want compactness and so on you have to assume a is closed so that standing is standing assumption that a is a closed family of continuous functions from x to k it will be compact in the supremum norm topology if and only if it is bounded and equicontinuous okay so this is the statement the proof is one part is very easy the second part is a uh, little more uh, you know new techniques uh, eliminating so that's what we have to start with a compact 
A, then it is clearly bounded because in any metric space compact subsets are bounded. In fact, we know that it is totally bounded. To see equicontinuity given epsilon positive, let f1, f2, fn contained inside A be an epsilon 3 net. Okay, because I am now using the total boundedness of, of this one. Okay, for each i ring 1 to n, okay, there are f1 of the fns, right? Choose delta i such that modulus of x minus y is less than delta i implies f i of x minus f i of y is less than epsilon minus 3 by uniform continuity since x is compact. Indeed, here I should put just distance between x and y. Okay, the modulus will make sense only when x is real or complex number, or R n or C n. Let now delta be the minimum of delta one, delta two, delta n. Okay, you see, I have already used. There is only finitely many of them, so as before indicated by re my remark, I am taking the minimum of this delta i. Check this, this delta i as the property distance between x and y is less than delta i implies f x minus f y less than for all the f's. First, it is true for all f1, f2, fn. Now, you have to use the fact that this f1, f2, fn is an epsilon by 3 net. So, you have to do little more triangle inequality business here. Okay. So, that much I am leaving it to you as an exercise. For all f inside a, this will be true. So, from finite set to the whole of a, the link is that this finite set is a epsilon 3 net. So, that comes from total boundedness. All right. The converse part is much more involved. Okay, if these conditions are satisfied, then you have to show that this A is compact. Okay, that A is compact. Okay. Starting with a bounded and equicontinuous family, we shall show that A is sequentially compact. Then, by our earlier theorem, compactness of A will follow. Okay, being a closed subspace of a complete metric space, A is a complete metric space by itself, right? Therefore, from the previous theorem, A will be compact. A complete metric space, all these things are equivalent, etc. We have seen earlier. Since X D is a compact metric space, it is second countable also and hence separable. Okay, therefore, x has a countable dense subset. Let us fix one such, any one, any countable set which is dense. Okay, no need to be any specific here because after all, x t is an arbitrary space. We do not know anything more than that. Okay, fix one such separable subspace subset of x that is all fine countable separation start with a sequence say f f1 f2 fn so i am calling it as f0 inside a every sequence must have a subsequence which is convergent is our aim to show that this f has a subsequence to convergent so what we are going to do is we are going to produce a sequence of subsequences okay by that is almost like improving f each, each step we shall produce a subsequence which is convergent finally so the first sequence is look at values of f1 okay uh, f1 x1 f1 uh, f2 x1 and so on all of this entire sequence evaluated at x1 at one single point. 
so now what we have got is a sequence inside k which is bounded because the entire of a is bounded so f n of f n is also bounded by one single uh, say m or something so each sequence here is bounded right a bounded sequence inside r or c has a subsequence which is convergent so the property of the codomain is essential here okay it is happening in the codomain point wise so we are using that here so it has a convergent subsequence so we shall use this to denote so this convergent sub subsequence fi1 x1 it's like you know f1 x1 f2 x1 f3 x1 and so on so a subsequence we have got okay fi x1 we shall now work with the sequence f1 which is fi1 forget about x1 fi1 okay this is subsequence of f1 f2 fn okay original thing so that subsequence we are calling it as f1 now apply the same technique to this f1 but with the point x2 evaluate it at x2 okay take a subsequence of this which is convergent like this inductively choose sequences fk which is a subsequence of f you know fk minus 1 and convergent what is convergent fik xk is convergent okay each time fik xk is convergent fik is a subsequence of fik minus 1 okay so we have got a sequence of subsequences from starting with one sequence okay so here is a picture you can say F1, X1, F2, X1, and so on. Okay, I have picked up Fi1, X1. Okay, then there is there are many more terms here. I am not bothered about that. I am looking at the first term here. Okay, so if I you only take that subsequence that is convergent is what I know. Similarly, in the second part, I have a subsequence of these Fi. Okay, I am not bothered about this one. so i am taking something the subsequence this may be equal to this one doesn't matter it is important that i am going forward so i put it somewhere here that is the subsequence of that okay so next that is the subsequence of that and so on so ultimately what i want is these term are increasing i2 i3 etc okay so this is x2 here so fi1 x1 etc so so this is what i am looking at so what i am going to do is just sj equal to fjj for all j okay then what happens is this sj is a subsequence of the original f because indexing is going uh, increasing only that's that's all we need for a subsequence but what is the property of this sequence that is what we want to know so in order to show that this sequence is convergent it is enough to show that it is cauchy sequence okay for each point okay if it is cauchy what happens inside k k is just c or r all right that will be convergent but here what we are showing is the cauchy sequence in the metric of of what of c uh, which is uh, continuous functions from x to r or x to k okay which is uniform which is just the uh, supremum norm so what you get is uniform cauchy this cauchy sequence just means that in each point if you take those sequences a uniform cauchy therefore you will get uniform convergence automatically so let us don't bother about that much all that i am want to show is that 
inside the matrix space that we are working namely inside c this sequence is a cauchy sequence then since c is already complete that we have already proved a will be closed uh, sorry a is also closed what happens the limit which exists because c is complete the limit will be inside a ah so we have found a sub sequence which is convergent inside a starting with any such sequence as convergent sub sequence inside a will prove that a is complete okay so what is immediate is the fact that for each i the sequence sj of xi is convergent okay for each fix fix i at each i sj of xi will be convergent because sj of xi after a certain stage is a subsequence of fi of xi right all that i have to do is I, j is uh, bigger than i so that uh, once it is subsequence of that uh, that is a, uh, a sequence is converged subsequence will be converged so each sj of xi sj of x1 sj of x2 SJ. so what we have achieved is a sequence which is convergent at this countable subset the countable subset is not arbitrary countable subset it is a dense subset from the density we want to conclude that this sj is convergent at all the points so what we will do is we will just show that it's cauchy sequence that's all given epsilon positive by equicontinuity of a we have a delta positive such that dxy less than delta implies sj of x minus sj of y is less than epsilon 3 for all j okay you can choose any anything here given epsilon i choose epsilon by 3 to do that one accordingly there is some delta since xi is a dense set it follows that if you take union of all open balls of any positive radius b delta xi i range from 1 to infinity all these xi's are belonging to a dense subset this will be the whole space of it every point must belong to one of them okay since x is compact we will get a finite subset xi1 xi2 xi k such that x is in the union of i ring to 1 to k b delta of xi so we have got an epsilon net for x itself now okay <laughs> right so epsilon net was coming from uh, implicitly for the family a here now it is coming for x itself so that is the role of equicontinuity here okay so what is the net result now for each fixed r look at sj of x i r okay i r i1 i2 i k only k of them okay all these are convergent we know that one right and hence a cauchy sequence they are cauchy sequences okay out of all of them just the the i ring 1 to k of them i am looking at they are cauchy sequences therefore we can find a uniform n not such that if n and m are bigger than n not sn of xir minus sm of xir is less than epsilon by 3 each each 1 2 3 up to k will give you n1 n2 and k you take the maximum as n not then for that it will be true for all r r equal to 1 2 3 up to k right finally given x belonging to x now let ir be such that x is in one of the balls because x is union of this then x will be at a distance delta less than delta from xir therefore we can use this okay 
what have, what what we get is for n and m bigger than n not i have this inequality so i what i do sm minus sn as soon as m is bigger this one i break it into three parts okay add and subtract sm of xir sm of xir added and subtracted then sn of xir finally sn of x so sm of x minus sm of xir is less than equal to epsilon by 3 by this inequality okay so this one, uh, this one comes from this inequality but x is inside in this ball so similarly xi x is inside this ball which will give you the the other two inequalities so you have s prime of 3 epsilon by 3 epsilon by 3 this is that this is true for all x now the right hand side is independent of x right therefore the norm of sn minus sm itself is less than equal to sn so this means that the sequence sn is uniformly cauchy cauchy in the norm that we are being we have been using the namely the banach space norm there okay so that is a proof so you see how uh, equicontinuity has been used here okay so here are a few remarks here the total boundedness is replaced by merely boundedness here but what <laughs> what we have here is already and the assumption is that x is compact you know compact matrix space that's how all these things work however the equicontinuity together with compactness is taking care of that okay remember in that general theorem we wanted total bounded and completeness then only it was compact but we are not putting total boundedness on x okay it is on c we are working on c for that the equicontinuity helps us this type of results began with the work of ascoli in 1884 or 1883 sometimes ascoli and arzela are both italian mathematicians almost contemporaries Ascoli introduced the notion of equicontinuity and proved the if part of the theorem, which was more complicated here. Okay. However, ten years later, Arcella improved upon it by proving the only if part. I say improving upon it means because he also clarified. his paper is much more more uh, uh, readable also in that sense the notion of equicontinuity equicontinuity belongs to ascoli but the present day form has been you know its contributions many other authors are there like freshe squar etc they have enriched it with many other versions which are quite often more general and so on right the the original version of ascoli is only for closed intervals inside r to r we immediately can realize that you know r can be replaced by c there is no problem but there are many more other versions wherein the codomain can be replaced by what are called as uniform spaces and so on okay so ascoli arzela ascoli theorems have been of great use in differential equations complex analysis especially montel's theorem peter weil theorem etc for a more general result than the one discussed here you may see kelly's book which we have been referring to all the time all right so here are a some easy exercises for you show that a matrix space 
सेकेंड काउंटेबिलिटी लिंडल ऑफनेस एंड सेपरेबिलिटी दे आर ऑल इक्वेल द सेकेंड एक्सरसाइज शो दैट अ टोटली बाउंडेड मेट्रिक स्पेस इज सेपरेबल एंड हेन्स सेकेंड काउंटेबल सो इसी हाउ डिफरेंट कंसेप्ट आर रिलेटेड ऑफकोर्स ओनली वेन यू आर वर्किंग विथ मेट्रिक स्पेसेस so that is uh, for today let us meet next time thank you